the text that we will be dealing with today is uh, from the bible is entitled uh, love stands alone it has been translated by ml thalang thangappa and has been edited and introduced by ar venkata chalapathi coming to the background of ml Thang, uh, thangappa and ar venkata chalapathi as is seen in the slide along with it um, ml Th thangappa he was a tamil writer and translator whose oeuvre encompasses translation of Tamil Bhakti poetry, of which Love Stands Alone, selections from Tamil Sangam poetry is a part. That was published by Penguin Books in the year 2013, along with uh, Nalatiyar, that is post-Sangam period didactic Tamil poetic work, so on and so forth. He has translated a lot of work from Tamil. What is a didact? What do we mean by didactic is the term which it is related to the Greek word didactico, uh, is an instructive form of art that aesthetically replenishes, replenishes its motive from the environment which is replete with the elements of entertainment to convey the concerns with ideas of right and wrong or rich moral lessons. I would repeat it again. What do I mean by didactic? Um, is the term which is related to the Greek word didacticos, uh, an instructive form of art that aesthetically re replenishes its mot motive from the environment which is replete with elements of entertainment to convey the concerns with ideas of right and wrong or moral lessons. For example, the tales of Panchatantra uh, by Vishnu Sharma. Uh, the recensions though have been attributed to both Vishnu Sharma and Vasubhaga. It has been considered a classical literature in Hindi text. Um, so a short note on translation. Before we go to A.R. Venkata Chalapathi. There has been a long tradition of translating Sangam poetry into English and to a certain extent other European languages. It began with the Orientalist interest in Tamil largely as counterweight to the Sanskrit bias of Indology. Even by the end of the 19th century, as the Sangam classics went into print, G.U. Pope had identified Purana Nuru as he tried to translate. had taken considerable proportions in the early 1960. A.K. Ramanujan stepped into the scene accidentally discovering Sangam poetry when he went looking for a book of grammar in the stocks of the Harper Library. A slim volume of classical anthology that was written in 1960, the, the Interior Landscape that was published in year 1967 and the more substantial Poems of Love and War that was published in year 1985. The directness of the poems broke the Western stereotypes based on an exclusive focus on Sanskrit literature. That Indian poetry could only be ornate. A gifted poet himself, Ramanujan, brought his considerable skills to make the classics read like contemporary poems. His translations are distinct, not distinct not only because of the idiosyncratic typographic arrangement which is which he suggested communicated the syntactic structure of the original poems his theoretical reflections on translation and his scholarly afterwards to his publications fed into the academic fields of post-colonial and translation studies his acute dependence on commentaries and some howlers notwithstanding for instance his mistaking the indigenous hill tribe of kuravan for the modern day nari kuravars and and translating it as gypsy and his literal translation of Senna Pulavar as red tongued poets. There's no gain saying Ramanujan's immense contribution. If Sangam poems are now found in anthologies such as the Penguin Book of Love Poetry, Pen Penguin Book of Women Poets, and Women Writing in India, and even on the London Underground, and more than one novels draw its title from Sangam, Sangam poems, Vikramachandra's Red Earth and Pouring Rain, P. A. Krishnan's The Tiger Claw Tree, and Preeta Sam Samarasan's Evening is the Whole Day, uh, the credit. 
uh, the credit goes to Ramanujan alone. A peculiar situation obtains in Tamil Nadu where Tamil works are translated into English in the vein. Hope that the mere translation into a global language would win worldwide recognition. Not surprisingly, such translations are of uneven quality without a sensitive ear to the nuances of idiom and contemporaries. ML Thanangappa. Uh, Thangappa is therefore exceptional. Born in 1934 in Kurumpala Peri, a small village in Tirunelveli, Tirunelveli district not far from the mythical birthplace of Tamil, the Pothikal Hills, Thangappa comes from a family of Tamil Pandits. Uh, the Thangappa's father and at least two of his uncles were Tamil teachers. Thangappa was a somewhat precocious child and when barely a boy, he could recite scores of Tamil poems. This immersion in Tamil words at an impressionable age has had a very peculiar effect on his prosodic skills. His keen ear can always detect minor variations or improvisations in met met metric form, even when not being able to actually name them. When Thangappa went to then the then venerable St. John's, Jones College, his grasp of idiomatic English already imbued from reading English fiction, was buttressed by reading the Bible and the Romantic poets, taught by the learned teachers, including European clergymen who lectured there. As a Tamil teacher for over over 25 years, lecturing at various colleges of the of the Puducherry government, Sangam literature has been the staple of his teaching, parsing and interpreting the terse poems for generation of students. Thangappa is an accomplished Tamil poet who has established several, several collections, not for his, him free words, and all his poems are written in a variety of traditional metrical form. His mastery of Sangam vocabulary and prosody is such that he has even written a modern guide poem. Uh, Idyarkai Aturapadai mimics the Aturapadai genre to guide an urban youth to the pleasures of nature. Here is tradition encountering talent at its best. He has also written a number of Tamil poems in the Akkam and Puram genre. Sundara Ram, Ramaswamy's words in his novel J.J. Uh, Sila Kurupukal about one Cher Thalai Krishna Iyer, I could barely even begin to imagine his scholarship in Sangam literature. I fancied that he could probably go through a novel written exclusively in Sangam vocabulary as one reads the daily Dina Tha Thanti has often reminded me of Thangappa. It is this thorough immersion in Sangam poetry, its language, vocabulary, style and content that makes Thangappa an enviable translator. His understanding of the poems is more intuitive than erudite. Not for him the secondhand interpretation of Sangam poems through medieval and modern commentators. Exactly half a century ago began Thangappa's foray into translation. At the instance of uh, Tha Kov Kovandhan, he began translating poems for his Tamil poetry monthly, Vanambadi, and later for Thenmolis, Thenmoli. His earliest uh, translation used traditional English meter and rhyme, which he soon abandoned. Selections from his later attempts were published privately in 1970 as a slim volume set elegantly in it italics in a small letter press in Puducherry. Hughes and harmonies from an ancient H and H for short already signals his genius for translating Tamil classical poetry. In the phase we we can discern his habit of not translating stock epithets and formulaic uh, phrases and a penchant to explain and paraphrase a bit. A desperate sign of wanting the non-Tamil reader to understand. By the 1980s, when I had begun, the, uh, begun to work closely with him, he had already uh, he was already moving towards terseness and brevity. This is Venkata Chalapathi saying for ML Thangappa. It is from the introduction, trans, uh, from the introduction under the section of translation. Thangappa's self-effacing nature, combined with an indifference to the ways of English publishing, has meant that the files of translations in his chaotic study have kept accumulating. It has been said that the great works of literature should be translated anew for every generation. In a manner of speaking, Thangappa has done that himself, revising translations for every generation. A.R. Venkata Chalapathi, he is an Indian historian, 
whose work of translation are in both Tamil and English language. He's actively involved in the Hindu literary festival, the Hindu paper, annual events as a speaker and resource person. In the year 2007, he was re rewarded VKRV Rao Prize in Social Science Research. Also, ML Thangappa received the Sahitya Academy Award for Love Stands Alone selections from Tamil Sangam poetry, the thing that we are reading right now, um, in the year 2012. Moving on to the next slide, uh, we'll see that uh, here are references uh, to various people who have praised the work. Um, we'll see that in the third praise there, uh, it is written Emil Thangapa's translation from the Sangam anthologies possess a rare precision and accuracy crafted in a voice that is vivid, supple and uniquely his own his own classical Tamil and modern English are separated by what can seem like unbridgeable distances of time, form, idiom and culture. Yet reading Thangappa, I am surprised, even astonished to find the thought of South Indian poets of two millennia ago newly and seemingly effort effortlessly embodied. Whitney Cox School of Oriental and African Studies. Moving on to the next slide, this is a poem. Um, if you will go through it. So, uh, according to K. Ke Kelasapathy, who, uh, who was born in the year 1933 and died in year um, 1982, according to him, he was a Sri Lankan journalist and academic academician. The epithet ancient wisdom was used for them. Many of them were elegant versifiers, amiable companions, consummate courtiers and venerated wise men all in one. It was this many sided personality of the baths which gave them a distinct identity and scope of expression that has secured the position in history. In later ages, the poems of the Bards soon became to be considered unique. The exclusive expression cannot seal poetry of the noble, noble ones was special used for their works when referring to the poetry of this age, the medieval commentators coming to the introduction and by uh, us, uh, him was given uh, in slide poetry is at odds with T.S. Eliot and his uh, well-known essay is uh, the references to T.S. Eliot and his well-known essay in the field of literary age of modernism as a corollary to the First World War uh, that happened in year 1914 till 1918. Uh, so as a corollary to it was the period of modernism and T.S. Eliot published his essay Tradition and the Individual Talent in the year 1919. Uh, so when uh, Venkatesh Telepathy starts with this that classical Tamil poetry is an odds with uh, what has been said about tradition by T.S. Eliot. So what does T.S. Eliot say about tradition? He says, according to T.S. Eliot, the tradition there were uh, that uh, tradition is only occasionally in invoked and usually to deplore its absence. So T.S. Eliot says uh, of tradition that tradition is occasionally invo invoked and usually to deplore its Absence. So he says that classical Tamil poetry is an odd spirit. According to the tradition, uh, according to the tradition of uh, Sangam, uh, according to the tradition, there were three Sangams or academies in ancient Tamil. Uh, noticed with birth. Uh, and uh, as an academy, it was noticed then. And uh, as uh, an academy, it was it flourished in the ancient Tamil Nadu, where poets uh, congregated to debate and authorize literary works. The first Sangam is said to have flourished. Third, uh, the fourth point in the slide. The first Sangam 
is said to have flourished uh, in, in the south of present day Kanyakumari, now submerged in the ancient Pandyan city of then Mathurai. Uh, Mathurai is also referenced to in Silapati Karam in the book third uh, as the kingdom of Pandya. So the first Sangam flourished there uh, and it reigned for around 40, uh, 4,440 years. Uh, the second uh, the second uh, Sangam flourished in uh, Kapara uh, Puram uh, and it reigned for 3,700 years. Both the works, both uh, these uh, uh, Sangams, uh, Sangam for the first Sangam and the second Sangam, uh, comprised of 50, 59 crore poets and were lost during the course of time. Uh, Sangam of which Silapati Karam is literally historic, uh, historiographically a part is uh, so lit what is it? Silapati Karam is the part of the third period of the Sangam that reigned for around 1850 years. Uh, so Silapati Karam is literally historiographically a part of, a, uh, of uh, this um, section of Sangam, the third and the final period of the Sangam. Um, so what is literary history? What do I mean by that is that it is a school of thought in literary theory and criticism based on commemoration of literary history. It flourished. The period flourished in the city of Mathurai and reigned for around uh, 1850 years. So the poem that we saw here, uh, right here, in the desolate rain forsaken land, the twisted Kali's uh, Kali spots open with a crackle, frightening the mating pigeons uh, with their close knit downy feathers. He has left me languishing in search of wealth, he said. He did not mind the risks on the way. If it comes to that, then in this in this world, wealth has all support and love must stand alone. So um, according to the scholar, the poem Karun Thokai is said to have been composed by uh, Siva and uh, Nakhil. Uh, he elucid elucidates the foil in the terms of fanciful numbers in mythology. Moving on to the third slide. Uh, so, um, Sangam, um, the extant corpus, as, is, as in the third and the final uh, period of the Sangam, of which uh, the works are still preserved and are existing. existing. Uh, so the extant corpus is anthologized in two sets of 18 works as major and minor. The major is divided into etu, etu that consists of eight anthologies and Pathupattu that consists of 10 long poems. The minor works, uh, minor work, uh, the minor um, the minor set consists of 18 works from the period that has been uh, ascribed to as post Sangam, also known as Pathinen Kila Kannaku. Uh, so, uh, what is an anthology? Anthology is a collection of literary and musical work. Um, so according to the essays, it is now certain that some of the poems may have been composed as early as in the second century BCE. Uh, so uh, the two, the extant corpus has been divided into major and minor. Major consists of this. The minor consists of what is on the right. Uh, coming to the anthologies, uh, so the anthologies consist of Ena Kurunuru, Kurunathokai, Natirinai, Akana, Akana Kuru, Akana Nuru, uh, Kali Thokai, Pathi Thuru Pathu, Pari Padal, and Purana Nuru. Thur Muruga Thurupadai, also known as Pulavar Aturapadai, Porunar Aturapadai, Sirupan Aturupadai, Perumpan Aturupadai, Mulai Pattu, Mudarai Kanji, Neduna, Neduna, Nedunal Vadai, Kurunji Pattu, Patina, Patina, Apalai and Malai Padu, uh, Padukadam, also known as Kuthar Atur Padai, make up the Padukadam. Um, it might be useful here to understand the structure of the anthology. So what we have to focus is on the structure of the anthologies. Enakurunuru consists of 500 Akam poems, which vary in length between three and six lines, is divided into 100 poems for each of the five Thinais. We'll be discussing this in detail in the next slide. Organized in tens. 
Kurana Thukai, Natirinai, and Akana Nuru consist of 400 Akam poems. Akam is the internal, the love. The organizing principle is the length of the poems. Kurana Thukai consists of 4 to 8 lines, Natirinai 9 to 12, and Akana Nuru 13 to 31. Akana Nuru itself is divided into three books. Um, as the name uh, is there in the slide, Kalitri Yana Nai Nirai, Mani Midai Pavalam, and Nithila Kovai, based on the arresting phrases occurring in them, even though the logic of the division is not evident. Within the Akana Nuru, all odd numbered poems belonging to Palai Thinai, thus accounting for half of the poems. Poems in the sequence of 2, 8, 12, 18 belong to Kurinji. Poems in the sequence of 4, 14, 24 are Mulai. Poems in the sequence of 6, 16, 26 belong to Maruttam. And even 10th poem, uh, 10, 20, and 30 is a Nedal Thinai. It is evident that these three anthologies were put together at the same time. Puran, Purana Nuru, the prime text in Puram, which is uh, which deals with the motive of war, was also probably anthologized at the at this time. Pathi Puthu, uh, with ten decades, each one in praise of a Chera king, containing a wealth of information which can be teased out for historical evidence, is also considered to belong to the early stratum of the Sangam corpus. So now coming to defining the tradition now. There is an important point to note uh, along with uh, what is uh, what is there in the slide is the um, Kali Kali uh, as is the part of uh, uh, right in the second line of uh, blank verse the, is as example in the desolate rain forsaken land so he says that the arrangement of stressed and unstressed syllable uh, the identification of the words depends on the arrangement of the stressed and unstressed syllables. Syllables, uh, blank words which follows the iambic pentameter. The group of syllables which form a uh, so a group of syllable like like EIG will form a free point. So he says an iambic pentameter. Um, the group syllables number in a line. In syllable weight. The weight on R. Right. So the I am based on R short syllable four label. Uh, like above. A short syllable a uh, followed by a long syllable above. Right. So this is uh, that is why he says um that uh, this is what we mean by blank uh, words that is an iambic pentameter uh, another example of uh, of you know a word uh, which uh, will help you understand how a short syllable is followed by a long syllabus is the word alone in the text we are reading love stands alone so the word alone a lone so the short syllable followed by the long syllable um, so according to the scholars, according to the scholars, <clears throat> poets are said to be repositories of ancient wisdom. The poets of the Sangam period are said to be repositories of ancient wisdom with prophetic abilities and whose praise the kings and patrons seek. Now coming to defining the tradition, Tholakapiyam. Tholakapiyam, uh, remember we discussed Tholakapiyam while we were discussing Silapati Karam. So Tholakapiyam is by Tholakapiyanar. Uh, we also discussed Ag Agathyanar's grammar uh, of uh, whom Tholak uh, Tholakapiyanar was a student. Uh, so uh, according to Tholakapiyam, divides the content and subject matter of all literature into two categories. That is Akam and the Puram. Right. Now coming to like Akam and Puram, um, so the Thinais of <clears throat> Akam, if you'll go to the Thinais of Akam, so uh, the scholar begins with 
the example of classic kurunji poem by kapilar uh, kapilar renowned for its mastery of the akam thinai the physical location is the richly forested hills he says the characteristic feature of the akam thinai is that um, akam thinais are uh, the physical location is the richly forested hills and the time is night references are made to boar the bear the tiger the elephant and termites and the hunter and his family and kin in this context is said the union of the lovers and the girls is fear of a nightly clandestine meeting um the example of which could also be seen in canto 30 of um of silapati karam where uh, she uh, the women the voice of the women which uh, signify the akam um, as as um, as in the puram of canto 30 uh, we see that they you know how they uh, verbalize their grief is through the mot- through the um, metaphor of loose bangles right uh, so he says the uh, through uh, while the thinais are replete with uh, you know phys- rich uh, richly forested hills and uh, you know uh, the uh, the location being the nature uh, ye- and in this context is said the union of lovers and the girls is fear of a nightly clandestine meetings thus each akam poem is situated in a specific context the matching in a specific context uh, in this uh the example of this could be the uh, conversation between the maid and the lady uh in silapati karam um thus each akam poem is situated in a specific context the matching of the thematic content with the physical setting is perspective perceptive and brilliant similarly how appropriate it is to set the palai poems with the essential theme of separation in the dry wilderness at midday in the hot summer months with struggling trees and the fierce kotharavai worshipping highwaymen however the mudal and karu the first and seek themes are no mere props in the poetic technique known as ulrai uvana uvamam or implicit simile they can become extremely suggestive for example in this poem this man from the village where the valai fish in the wet field snatches away a ripe mango falling beside the field has gone back to his sons his mother throwing the wind all his promises to me he now cotos before that woman like a puppet lifting his hands and legs as she pulls the strings so it is by maruttam um in this poem for instance the karu element of valai fish wet fields and ripe mango signify the hero's easy access to pleasure and happiness such nuances greatly enrich the poems and prove to be a challenge to the reader while only those elements appropriate to thinai could figure in a poem in the poem a certain amount of latitude permitted with reference to karu the category of exception was called thinai mayakkam but the area where no transition of trading was brooked a mill theme the defining element of akam you read the defining element of the of akam and according to b mangalam it is also the human element um the defining element of akam or what akam akam Manikam goes so far as to argue that the organizing principle for the Akam anthologies is the yuri, the human element. Taking up the three major anthologies of Akam poetry, he argues that the long Akana Nuru poems exemplify all three thematic elements: mudal, karu, and yuri. Nathrinai exemplifies karu and yuri, while the shorter karunthukai is dominate, dominated there for the conventions that make for akam poetry the inviolable rule of tolakapiyam being that in akam poetry no one may be mentioned by name in other words the dharmatis personae um, dharmatis personae may not be um, identified and they may be mentioned of this but in and through the various characters as through in a dramatic play coming to the thinai of puram puram too is divided into thinai just like akam 
Tholaka PM lists the following thinais, which are the counterparts to the thinai in Akam. Because Akam signifies the internal and Puram the external. Puram deals with the motive of war, while Akam deals with the union, the love, uh, the separation, um, and the union. Um, Tholaka PM lists the following thinais, which are the counterparts to the thinais in Akam. Vechi, Vanchi, Ulungai, Thumbai, Vagai, Kanchi, and Padan. The Mudal and Karu elements are more or less the same, but the unity pertains to specific Puram activities. In if it means to capturing enemy cattle as a prelude to war, Karanthai is concerned with the retrieval of cattle after the enemy raid. Wanchi is invading the enemy. Ulange is the encir encirclement of enemy, enemy fortifications. If Thumbai is the waging of war, Vagai celebrates the victory in war. Padan talks of the glory of warriors and kings in battle, in charity, in fame and honor. But this Tholaka PM classification of is expanded by the 9th century grammar Puraporul Venipa Malay to include Nochi concerned with facing the enemy's onslaught of the according to Tholaka P. Kaikalai and Perum Thinai, both originally poor cousin Thinais in Akam. Uh, Pothu Pothuvial is a miscellaneous category encompassing left out themes. In this revised classification, Kanchi, when it doesn't describe war activities, which is not very often, talks of the mutability and transience of life. Uh, it is seen in Canto 32 uh, of Silapathi Karam. Um, the bravery of warriors and young men not to speak of kings and chieftains is extolled in great detail, but the pride of place in the Purum poems must go to those in Padar time was underpinned by patronage, and we see that the bulk of poems eulogize the patrons, the kings, and chieftains. Kanchi Thinai, suffused with the idea of mutability and transience of life, has a certain universal appeal. So now, what the author has to say about the Akam and the Puram and uh, what do they have to say? Uh, what do they signify in the context of the uh, socio-political uh, and historical, uh, socio-political cultural uh, scenario of uh, the a period when Silapati Karam was composed? He says that the ancient Tamil society was moving towards an early agrarian state. The social organization was kinship and the economy and society were characterized by subsistence, production, redistribution, reciprocity and patronage. There was only an incipient presence of Buddhism, Jainism and Brahmanism. It has been viewed as an alternative literary theory that challenges Eurocentric literary models. The emerging field of eco-criticism has been found uh, has Two has found um, the Thinai model to be enriching. What do we mean by eco-criticism? Eco-criticism is a school of th uh, thought that espouses for uh, a balance between uh, uh, that espouses for the fa uh, for sustainability, uh, living in um, in coherence with nature. Uh, Akam poems deal with. Uh, love and conjugal live, uh, life and Puram deals with the war and Tamil idea of kingship as was discussed in the previous session, the Tamil idea of kingship in Silap through Silapathi Karam. Composing and continuing the tradition. So according to the essayist, uh, as seen by the scholars, um, as seen by the scholars, as is verbalized, formulated by the scholars. Um, he says that um, it is a continuous process. There, uh, it is a continuous process, and there is a uh, is an evidence of oral verse uh, ma uh, making technique in Sangam poetry, and seems to follow the rhythmic pattern of Bardic poetry. So, what is a Bardic poetry? Is the you uh, is eulogizing or glorifying the chieftains uh, and um, other warlords. So according to UV Swaminathan's, uh, so almost equating the neglection of the tradition of baths to mode of uh, torture, he says that, you know, uh, the neglection of this tradition of uh, Bhartic poetry, um, according to Venkata Chalapati, he uh, 
compares he compares it with uh, the torture practiced by mythical giant uh, procrustean um, K. Kalasapathy elaborates classification of baths uh, into um, Porunar, P O R U N A R, that is war, ba war baths, uh, Kuthar, uh, minstrels uh, who sing and dance, K U T H A R, uh, vir Viralier, uh, the female dancers and singers, V I R A L I Y A R, and Akava. Akavunar, uh, diviners and soothsayers. Uh, so this is the division of the Bard in the Bardic tradition as is seen in the Sangam period, uh, according to Venkata Chalapathi. So according to U. V. Swami uh, based on his co commentary of Kuruna Thokai, Venkata Chalapathi points out the enormously rich allusions uh, to um, enormously rich uh, allusions to um, uh, Sangam uh, lit, uh, Sangam period uh, replete in the Bhakti literature and later works as was seen in the previous slide that um, Sangam as an academic uh, as an academy uh, comes into notice during the century but it was flourishing uh, in South India. Now, the canonizing of the tradition, uh, according to uh, U.V. Swaminathan, a separate universe, he adds, it appeared like, for he says it for Sangam literature, uh, it appeared like another unique language. The vistas of the new world depicted in the Sangam books appeared as the mountains covered by mist. Though this heavy mist hung over the mountains, its loftiness and magnitude, though not fully visible, was yet perceptible as larger than the earth vaster than the sky and immeasurably measurably deeper than the seas so uvs uh, a year it has been said by uvs a year with regards to it in the context of canonizing the tradition even though tamil was was the first Indian language, in fact, the first European, uh, non-European language to use Gutenbergian movable type as early as in 1577. Paper, not to speak of print, was hardly used. In the Tamil literary world until the early 19th century. Convention with a sharp a dry place away from dampness, periodic cleaning with turmeric, etc. Palm leaves, leaves do not because palm leaves do not survive for long. Reproduction amounted to preservation. Copying of text, a time consuming process pregnant with difficulties by generations of students and scholars alone ensured preservation. Given the large investment in time and resources it demanded, Jan philanthropists hired scribes to copy important texts and gifted them to scholars on festive occasions. Between 1887 and 1923, all the Sangam classics had been printed. Pathu was published in year 1889. Purana Nuru was published in year 19... Natirinai was published in year 1914. Kurunthokai was published in year 1915. Paripadal was published in year 1918. And Akana Nuru in year 1923. The spectacular canonization of Sangam literature and its enormous popular appeal and political import should not detract us from the essentially scholarly and intellectual project it was. The recovery and redaction of the text was torturous. In the later half of the 
15th century, many texts were known only in name. The palm leaf manuscripts, heavily damaged and in complete neglect and disarray, lay scattered in badly maintained monastic libraries and in the lofts of erstwhile Pandit families, making them part with the manuscripts even for perusal and copying was, in the words of C.W. Damodaram, Pillai, akin to acquiring the mythical ruby when the black cobra was yet alive. In the even deciphering the badly damaged manuscripts was no easy task. The orthography employed posed a number of difficulties as dots essential to write consonants could not be used. A single character could be read in more than one way. One way. Punctuation being absent as commentary glasses and quotations followed one another without breathing space reading them demanded a good knowledge of prosody and a vast vocabulary coming to the last part of our session today that is uh, while discussing this essay uh, as a secondary reading to understand it better uh, a work by s murali titled Environmental Aesthetics, Interpretation of Nature in Akam and Puram Poetry. So according to S. Murali, what do I mean by aesthetics? So aesthetics is a school of th a thought that deals with the idea of beauty and uh, tries to formulate uh, on what is beautiful and why is it beautiful. Uh, so environmental aesthetics, interpretation of nature in Akam and Puram poetry. And by environmental aesthetics attempts to concept conceptualize the aesthetic concerns for the environment as it is worked out in the aesthetic process, though its various stages right from the initial creative vision. Uh, ideology, formulation, composition to its end product. In the present post-industrial age, ecological concerns have been surfacing at a drastic pace in every sphere of living. Nature has now come to be recognized as intrinsically valuable, independent of the human element and the shadow of the renaissance image of man as the center of all and everything has long given away given way to the more sympathetic biocentric view of the universe where the entire cosmos is interlinked and of equal value by the link between nature and art is something long standing and deep the sangam age is unique in something is unique in South Indian history and culture for its unparalleled creative contribution and its poetic offers poetics offers much material for discuss discussion study discursive study. However, my objective here is to point out only how far it affected the concept and interpretation of nature towards an ecological awareness. The usage of Sangam age might easily mislead. According to popular Tamil belief, there were three Sangams as was discussed, discussed assemblies of poets founded by the Pandya kings. The first one lasted for about 4,440 years and was in the now somewhat South Mathurai. Siva and the other gods and sages were its members. The second Sangam has its center in Kapatapuram and it lasted for 3,700 hundred years. By then, many gods had evacuated and mortals constituted a greater percentage of its membership. Kapatapuram was claimed by the sea and later Madurai became the seat of the third Sangam. Madurai became the seat of the third Sangam. This lasted for only about 1850 years. Whatever be the controversy among the scholars of ancient Tamil regarding the age and duration of the period, there is a general acceptance of the organic nature of the body of work that is usually termed Sangam literature. The period that spread from prior to 250 AD and lasted for over five generations produced a unique body of poetry that is usually classified under Patupatu, uh, Patupatu 10 songs and Ethutokai uh, 8 anthologies. Uh, right here, 
we had discussed this. So he's referring to uh, uh, the to um, the extent the existing corpus, uh, which has been divided into two sets of 18 works uh, divided as major and minor. Uh, so he says that the periods that spread from prior to 250 AD and lasted for over five generations produced a unique body of poetry that is usually classified under two heads, Patu Patu, Ten Songs and Etu, etu uh, Thohai, uh, etu thokai, etu thokai, um, that consists of eight anthologies and these are the eight anthologies um, out of which only six fall um, within the period. In their order of compilation, the ten songs are uh, Porunara, uh, Porunaru uh, Padai, Patina Palai, Perumbana Ru Padai, Kurunchi Pattu, Mulai Pattu, Neduna Lavai, Tirumuru Uharu Puda, uh, Padai, Ma Madurai Kanchi, Malai Padu Kalam, Sirupanaru Padai, the six anthologies compiled during the six age are Ahanaru, that is a collection of 400 love poems of 13 to 31 lines each compiled under the patronage of Pandyan, um, a contemporary of Avai, the poet, and Gurunuru, a collection of 500 love poems of three to six lines each compiled under the patronage of Mandaran Cyril Irumborai, a contemporary of Nedun Silian. Padir Pattu, a collection of 100 poems consisting of 10 equal sections, each being composed by a poet in praise of Chera King. Kurunthuhai, a collection of 401 love poems of 4 to 800 uh, lines, each compiled by Puru, Puriko. Uh, Narinai, a collection of 400 love poems uh, of 9 to 12 lines each compiled under the patronage of Pandyan Maran Valudi. Uh, Purana Nuru, a collection of 400 poems each of 4 to 40 lines. Uh, the major so this is the slide. Uh, the major themes of Sangam poetry are love and war, and that accounts for the two broad division of literature as whole, that is Akam and Puram, love poetry and war poetry respectively, as seen here. Um, so, uh, in a way, Akam appears to monop monopolize the major portion of Sangam literature. The life of couple of lovers is given its setting in a time and place that is called Mudal. Uh, its nature, natural background that is called Karu and then the details of their conduct that is called Yuri, URI, uh, are worked out. We can trace out the life of lovers running through the whole gamut of experience so provided by the system, writes Jesudasan and Hebziba Jesudasan. Uh, from the bloom of the first fresh passion in the green wood of Kurunsi, through the pain of partings in early wedded life in Palai, the patient waiting of the lone woman in Mulai, the longing agonized waiting of the woman in Needle, down to the entry of infidelity into the scene of mature love and quiet domestic ha happiness in Marudam. Into this structure, the whole variety of experience may be fitted with provisions, of course, for variation, as is seen in Silapati Karam 2. I would repeat again, from the bloom of the first fresh passion in the green wood of Kurunsi, through the pain of parting, right here, uh, through the pain of partings in early wedded life in Palai, the patient waiting of the lone woman in Mulai, the longing agonized waiting of the woman in needle down to the entry of infidelity into the scene of mature love and quiet domestic happiness in Marudam. In this structure, the whole variety of experiences may be fitted with provision, of course, for variation. 
The poetic world of Sangam poet is one of correspondences between time, place and human experience. A.K. Ramanujan, poet and scholar, citing Saussure, Saussure was a structuralist. His idea of uh, signifier and signified uh, is still a very important uh, preliminary uh, induction to ling linguistics. Uh, so, uh, A.K. Ramanujan, poet and scholar, extraordinary, who has translated a number of these poems, observes, citing Saussure's view, that every sign is a union of signifier and signified. In the Tamil system of correspondences, a whole language of signs is created by relating to the landscapes as signifiers, to the yuri or appropriate human feelings. Tolakapiyam, the earliest extant work of linguistic and literary conventions in Tamil that set the style and framework for the Sangam poets, distinguishes between two kinds, poral, uh, one of the three parts of Tolakapiyam, the other two being Azhuttu, E-Z, H-U-T-T-U, that is writing, and S-O-L, that is speech. The akaporul and the puraporul, the inner and the outer essence of the existence, love is akaporul, while all else belongs to the domain of puraporul. Hence, things related to war, peace, education, culture, and the other outer aspects of the social fabric fall within the category of puram. In Tinai or the fivefold categorization of environment into Kurunchi, Mulai, Maruttam, Nidal, and Palai, combined with the corresponding flora and fauna, should be seen as the earliest attempts by the Sangam poets towards the formulation of an environmental aesthetics, where the human bhava seeks its correspondence in the na natural, that is the webhava. You must have discussed this during uh, your uh, discussion um, on rasa. So, um, in detail, so where the human bhava seeks its correspondence in the natural webhava, as A.K. Ramanujan puts it, the actual objective landscapes of Tamil country become the interior landscapes of Tamil poetry. The mountain tract and where the valley begins is the Kurunchi Tenai. Hair is an idyllic surrounding the lovers come together. Hence, the Sringara Rasa is most often set in such a setting. By Singa the Sringara Rasa, S. Murali, uh, Murali um, compares it to the Sringara Rasa. Uh, so, Sringara Rasa, uh, if you might recall, was discussed in one of the texts. Which text was it? So, it was discussed in Sakuntala. Sringara Rasa is one of the dominant Rasa, is the primary Rasa in, uh, uh, in uh, Sak Abhijan Sakuntalam by um, Kali Dasa, where we see how Sangoba, Samboga and Viplava come into union to form the beautiful Rasa of Sring uh, Sringara. So, Samboga is the union viplava is the uh, separation uh, forming the sringara rasa so what uh, what purali um, has to say about um, the uh, internalization is this that uh, you know the idyllic surrounding the lover, lovers come together hence the uh, sringara rasa that is seen through the uh, kurunchi tenai uh, in the Mulai, the lonely woman bewails her lover and awaits his coming. The environment is the jungle and the rocky land bordering it. In Maruttam, where the land lies cultivated and fertile, becomes the scene where domestic happiness is invaded by infidelity and the forgotten wife quarrels with her besotted husband. The seashore is natal and hair. The woman suffers the anguish of separation from her fond lover. While in Palai, the desert land, much close to both Kurunchi and Mulai, Mulai the newly wed suffers the agony of her loneliness. This interlinking of the 
human and the non-human in a unified aesthesis is seen as the nataka vazaka n a t a v a z h a k k a m n a t a k a v a z h a k k a m as opposed to uh, ulakya lava zahakam uh, that is u l a k i y a l v a z h a k k a m so uh, nataka nataka va zahakam means natya dharmi and uh, as opposed to this ulakya vazakam means loka dharmi the second mentioned often being looked upon as of lesser importance the akam poems abound in sensual descriptions of nature and the poet's eye moves between the inner and the outer nature ak ramanujan has pointed out that a little known book in tamil by a bot botanist has pointed out that a uh, that documents once's constant sense that the sports knew their flora and fauna their botanical observations for instance are breathtakingly minute and accurate in these poems over 200 plants of all the five tamil regions are named and described used in insects and comparison root stem bark bud petal inflorescence seasons special kind of pollination etc are observed and alluded to in the text and their properties are aptly used to evoke human relationships the puram count counterparts of kurunchi is vechi seen right here so the the puram counterpart uh, the puram that deals with the motif of war the counterpart of kurunchi here is vechi both the flowers are the indigenous are indigenous to the mountain terrain and vechi came to be associated with cattle lifting because the tamil warriors adorned themselves with these flowers before they set out on their cattle raids as the puram convention demanded the poet wrote on customary battle themes varying their scenes and settings as and when it is called for mulai corresponds to the vanchi in puram in which the king is out to the war camps in the in the jungle track temporarily patience is common to both the mulai and vanchi divisions the division known as tumbai from the seaside flower of that name is the corresponding puram version of nedal in akam this is the scene of death articulate sorrow and separation of the venue of pitched battles as the palai denoted long separation vahai signified uh, victory in a war in the puram tradition and lastly the maruttham counterpart is yulinai this which signified the military movement by which soldiers surrounded by a city and attacked its defenses any casual glance at puram poetry would reveal that it was less limited by the natural landscape than was akam to quote xavier hathanai nayagam akam poetry has to consider as it is essential theme one of the five aspects of love poetry choose an appropriate situation and write with the prescribed landscape the annual season and the period of day pertinent to the division the poet had to be particular about choosing similes and metaphors from objects exclusive to the region the objects were sorry the gods food fauna flora music and other objects indigenous to the region by way of exception the flora or birds or any of the other objects of one region might be mentioned in a poem of another region for even nature is not rigorous in her natural divisions as to be so exclusive this mixing of regional objects was permitted and was known as regional interchange on the other hand the puram poetics was less demanding as its theme itself was foregrounded in the objective however it was the sangam sangam custom to be true to nature the inner and the outer and the environmental factor was a determinant in the poetic process the literary conventions had crystallized over the years much before the author of tolakapiyam categorically 
categorically formulated them in the porulathi Purul karam in a way this concern for the interrelationship of nature and human nature needs to be seen in the larger spectrum of significance the real world according to ramanujan ak ramanujan uh, the court uh, and i quote him the real world was always kept in sight and included in the symbolic in the sangam period the aesthetics of the ancient tamils was a significant system that was strictly conventional yet open ended they looked upon the entire environment as one unified whole where where meaning was not something that was realized at the end but a process interlinked to all and everything at all points this comes quite close to what we now recognize as a biosphere in ecological terms in an extremely interesting book postmodernism and the environmental uh, crisis published by rutledge in the year 1995 aaron e gare argues logically for retrieving the organic concept of the world as consisting of a multiplicity of process and sub processes each partially autonomous yet inseparable from the multiplicity of other processes a concept a concept that will reinstate the bio unity of all and everything drawing from the work of major european postmodernist thinkers gay establishes the relationship between the postmodern and the environmental situation what the postmodernists have so who are the postmodernists postmodernists uh, are um, is a period uh, in literary history that comes after post uh, after modernism it branches out of uh, modernism and um, we see uh, works uh, like that of uh, beckett um, and um, similar writers uh, and uh, and his similar writers like him his contemporaries uh, who espouse espouse for a disjunction um, that was furthered after the second world war so the reference is to that uh, period that period uh, of thinkers uh, at the school of thought as uh was witnessed uh, during the literary period uh, of that age what uh, the postmodernists have achieved is a significant liberation of philosophical inquiry which, which which will ultimately lead to a reorientation in thinking including the articulation of human interaction with the land which would ensure the health of the land and the community Gay points out that while Derrida has been concerned uh, to deconstruct the privileging of certain discourses, Lacan has exposed the patterns of opposition. These are both postmodernist thinker uh, Lacan and Derrida. Uh, patterns of oppositions which lead to the celebration of domination. Further citing the work of uh, Baudelaire. Bord uh both lear baths and leotard gay demonstrates the forms of desire that lead to the celebration of wasteful consumption and how the narratives that have dominated western civilization have devalued the other parallel narratives the identification and recognition of the pervasiveness of western forms of narrative narrative revealing how subjects are constituted as gendered how the goals of males is represented as the conquest of the world presaging of final but ever deferred return to an impossible unity and how females are represented as the passive though insatiably demanding by standards by standards or prize prizes for the winners in this struggle for conquest provides the key to understanding how the conceptual opposition revealed by lloyd uh, marchand and acely are assimilated and come to dominate people's life revealing this has provided support for the efforts of eco feminists and other environmentalists to revive the suppressed discourse of women and non europeans in opposition opposition to the patriarchal western discourse Gay concludes calling for a replacement of the grand discourses of the West by a contextual discourse that would be a mosaic of what he terms bio-regional narrative. 
the case of the postmodernism might sound way of tangent from the sangam poetics but a closer look at the socio political implication of the tamil eco poetics would easily reveal their affinity and relevance to our times quoting gaz words used elsewhere in different con contexts i would like to point out the intrinsic uh, value of the ancient tamil aesthetic people understanding the world and themselves in such terms would be able to appreciate processes ranging from atoms molecules clusters of galaxies galaxies stars planets global ecosystem and species individual organisms societies and cultures as having an intrinsic significance as contribution to the unfinished becoming of the world they should be able to appreciate the significance of their own lives and each decision and action as contribution to the world as a whole as well as to the culture i repeat they should be able to appreciate the significance of their own lives and each decision and action as contributions to the world as a whole as well as to the culture societies and ecosystems of which they are part but they should also be able to appreciate the intrinsic significance of their own lives as such and the part of the significance of cultures societies and ecosystems and the world as a whole is a conditional cause causes of their own becoming for having made it possible for them to live an intrinsically significant significant life to support such images of becoming not only in aesthetic terms but also in scientific terms it is necessary to cultivate a reorientation in thinking the environmental movement and the greens of the world over have been for over two decades protesting against woolly minded orientation of a post technological world that is forever misguided by the despotic technocracy of science and its believers environmentally aware critics like gare whom i have quoted argue for alternative directions in the thinking of the dominant western societies not towards the triumph of any nation movement ideology or class but towards the triumph of life and in order to build up new grand narratives and erasing the older obsolete notions of the development myth it is becoming increasingly important to turn to alternative thought systems in non eurocentric situations the values that underlay the sangam poets aesthetic was such an organic one that calls out for serious reevaluation of our own situation i have uh, so uh, the poet uh, so the essayist uh, ends by saying that we should uh, we need to reevaluate and take uh, take uh, the, the sangam poets aesthetic uh, as an organic one and as a uh, 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 parallel and uh, parallel to the eurocentric uh, school of uh, literary criticism and theory with this i'll move on to the discussion on this essay so this essay to summarize it uh, so this introduction by uh, v r venkatesh chalapathi um, a r venkatesh chalapathi introduction that we have dealt with here uh, talks about uh, the akam along with the period of sangam and uh, the anthologies in detail um, it starts with how the sangam is divided into three periods uh, then goes on to talk about uh, the anthologies uh, the, that it has been uh, divided into two sets of um, major and minor um, going on to eight anthologies um, named as such then it goes on to describe the structure of the anthologies and uh, after he has described the structure of the anthology uh, he talks about the akam and the puram and what do they signify and what do they consist of so we discussed the thinai of akam we have discussed the thinai of akam the thinai of puram um, also to the secondary reading to the background text uh, that is love stands alone um, um, we get to know that how these are closely associated with the uh, with the nature and has been verbalized in the work of s murali as um, 
environmental aesthetics. Uh, so um, what did uh, the Akam and the Puram and the whole uh, whole um, background reading um, uh, as uh, addendum to Silapati Karam uh, tells us about the um, the period is that the ancient Tamil society was moving towards an early agrarian state. The social organization was kinship and the economy. Uh, the economy and society were characterized by subsistence, production, redistribution, reciprocity and patronage. There was only an incipient presence of Buddhism, Jainism and Brahmanism. Um, the emerging uh, the emerging field uh, of eco criticism has been has found the Thinai has found the Thinai model to be extremely enriching uh, or Akam poetry deals with the conjugal life and Puram deals with the motive of war. Then we have in the introduction itself. We go on to talk about the composing and the continuation of tradition uh, and then the canonization of tradition. We have already discussed the translation uh, aspect uh, while you were discussing ML Thangappa. Um, later on, we have summarized the whole uh, work, the whole uh, introduction to the secondary reading by S. Murali. If you will have uh, if you have any queries regarding uh, the text of the discussion for the session today, I'd be happy to. So uh, in the context of people who have had who are facing difficulty understanding it. So this is a background to uh, the Sangam period that we were dealing with uh, the Sangam period that we were dealing with as in uh, up the text that we dealt with by Lanku Atikal Silapati Karam as a secondary reading as a background reading to it uh, is in detail the classification of Akam and Puram and the period of Sangam and the period of Sangam and what does it signify? What does it signify and what are the characteristic feature of it? And to, by the virtue of those characteristic feature, what idea do we get about the whole uh, period in get to know that you know there are three periods that Sangam is divided into three uh, belongs to the third period of uh, the Sangam and now uh, the extent um, the extent text I uh, have been of 18 texts each into major and minor uh, the the major consists of uh, 10 anthology uh, of the eight anthologies and 10 long, uh, long poems and in the anthologies the structure of anthologies was discussed as has been given by the A.R. Venkata Chalapati in the introduction of Love Stands Alone. We also discussed about Akwal, the blank words, what does it mean and um, the various other aspect of um, Sangam period. Uh, so this has been delved into in detail by VR Chalap Chalap VR Venkata Chalapati uh, in this work. The names are difficult, which is fine because uh, they're not difficult. We are not used to them. So if you will go through them, go through the text, uh, you'll get you'll be familiar with them soon. So how many cantos do we have to study in Silapati Karam? I did discuss all these things in the previous session yet uh, to repeat them uh, in. Uh, OK, I'll directly go to the slide of Silapati Karam. Um, so in Silapati Karam, we see that uh, in the book of Puhar. Uh, in the book of Puhar, we have. Um, Canto um, so of Puhar is book one in Silapati Karam and uh, Sila, uh, the book one deals with Canto one. Uh, it deals with Canto two uh, deals and Canto seven from the book of Puhar Canto one, Canto uh, two and Canto seven. I have also sent the text uh, in the morning in the WhatsApp group in the WhatsApp group uh, and it has all the specific cantos in it from the book of Mathurai that is book two of Silapati Karam uh, the garland of Sa uh, sorrow that is canto 18 canto uh, 19 and canto 20 
Canto 21 and Canto 22. Canto 22, Canto 21, Canto 20, 19 and 18 from the book of Mathurai. From the book of Vanchi, we have Canto uh, 24, we have Canto 26 and the last Canto that is Canto uh, 30. While the work, um, while the work, the epic Silapati Karam ha, that is divided into three books has in total 30 cantos. The book one, ha, the book one that is the book of Puhar has 10 cantos. Uh, the second book that is the book of Mathurai and deals with the reign of the Pandya king and uh, is the place where uh, God, uh, where Kannaki, the female protagonist uh, is uh, revered as DT. Um, it becomes a DT is um, it has 13 cantos in it. The last book that is uh, the book of um, the book of Vanchi deals with um, the book of Vanchi deals with um, uh, 10, uh, 7 cantos in total. So the mountain part uh, is a place uh, that in Silapati Karam 2 uh, is seen as a place uh, where the hill dwellers for the first time regard uh, Kannaki as a goddess, right? And it is also where the apotheosis happens. It is considered, the, because it is elevated, the mountain region is elevated, it is considered as a as a sacred place from where uh, Kannaki is able to transgress from the mortal realm to the celestial realm. All the material is being shared and in case somebody has is not a part of a WhatsApp uh, of the WhatsApp group or is a part of WhatsApp group and has not been able to locate it, I'll resend it again. If you have any queries regarding the session today, I uh, as per the suggestion right here that uh, why not be bilingual? Uh, I would definitely do that if you people are comfortable with it. Um, but I hope what I'm saying is comprehensible also because we are specifically dealing with English literature. I try to use simpler words and these literary terminologies that we have been discussing is really important. So what type of questions should you expect uh, from this? Uh, any type of question that is related to it. Uh, so basically you should uh, keep in mind, uh, uh, you know, what does Sangam literature signify? What does Akam and Puram stands for? Uh, what are Thinais? And how are, is this visible through the text of Silapati Karam? In Silapati Karam, the character of Karnaki, Koval and Mathavi um, and various other Mayana characters is important. The cantos that are prescribed to you are important uh, and what specifically they do stand for because they are really pertinent in this context that they uh, are uh, crucial in understanding the unity of uh, the storyline in terms of Silapati Karam. So um, this is what you should expect about uh, the uh, text and what does it deal with? Uh, what does it signify? Basically, the questions that you should expect is the critical analysis and uh, you know your understanding of the text. Uh, it is not going to be out of context. The questions you are going to get, it is going to be from what we have, what um, is there in the text and what has been, um, however paltry, been discussed through the session. There's all, uh, so if, Going uh, back again to the text that we dealt with today, uh, we get to see that there are varied opinions regarding, uh, you know, uh, the whole uh, academy, and um, th there are there is also a difference of opinion regarding uh, placing the text, uh, locating the text in that in the period of in the classification of Sangam, in the literary classification of Sangam. So there are varied opinions regarding it, yet the uh, the similar um, opinion um, uh, about the Sangam period is the characteristic feature of Akam and Puram and the Thirais that are there and what do they signify and how they are related to the nature. Uh, so these are the points that have been discussed in detail to today. If you have any more queries, we have the introduction from the Love Stands Alone, reminder from the book Lam Love Stand. Um, so yeah, the introduction that we discussed today. Um, 
it is important to note that at the very start of uh, his uh, introduction er venkat shalapathi makes it clear that you know the idea of talent uh, the um, the idea behind uh, the sangam uh, school of thought uh, is different from uh, the idea of tradition as has been uh, given to us by ts eliot a modernist uh, well known modernist uh, scholar so he says that according to um, ts eliot in his essay tradition and the individual talent um, the tradition is only occasionally invoked and usually to deplore its absence which is not a feature of sangam literature um because we see that tradition is constantly invoked and uh, and there is no deploration of its absence because uh, it is in abundance uh, and it is important to remember that the the sangam uh, has been divided into uh, three periods that is um, the first period that reigned for around 4440 years the second which reigned from around 3000 uh, for around 3000 300 uh, 3700 years and the last period of which silapathikaram is a part uh, for 1850 years so according to ar venkata chalapathi he says that uh, It, he is certain that some of the poems may have been composed as early as second century bc uh, again going back to the, back to the blank verse uh, that is used in kali thokai one of the anthologies eight, one of the eight anthologies mentioned uh, the blank verse uh, the identification of the verse is based on the arrangement of stressed and unstressed syllable blank verse which follows iambic pentameter the group of syllable, syllables which form a feet are five in a line the iamb based on syllable weight of classical greek rhythmic structure of lines uh, in verse follows the pattern of a shorthand syllable followed by a long syllable for example alone in love stands alone i have sent you the text uh, for silapathi karam uh, so you have it with you now you can get it printed out i look for the text of kalidas so i am going to scan it and send it to you for people who have not got it also um, the reminder one again that the material available in sol has been written by eminent scholars under the guidance of dr pk satpathy and dr nalini prabhakar ma'am and is of uh, extreme utmost importance please go through uh, it yes you will get um, herin you will get the ppt of all the classes and it has already been circulated for the previous sessions uh, for this session too i will be circulating it to the whatsapp group if there are any more queries people who are asking me to explain it in hindi uh, dekhiye uh, what is uh, what is uh, ar venkata chalapathi uh, jo hame batana chahte hain apne is introduction se wo kehte hain ki uh, jo sangam period hai um, संगम पीरियड हम ये इसलिए पढ़ रहे हैं क्योंकि ये बैकग्राउंड की तरह काम कर रहा है तो हम देखते हैं सिलपति कर्म में हम लोग ने डिस्कस किया है संगम पीरियड के बारे में क्योंकि वो टेक्स्ट सिलपति कर्म बिलोंग करता है उस पीरियड को संगम के उस संगम पीरियड को और संगम के कौन से पार्ट को क्योंकि संगम को हमने तीन कैटेगरी कैटेगरीज में डिवाइड किया हुआ है तो वो थर्ड पार्ट को बिलोंग करता है और उसके कैरेक्टराइजेशन हम लोग फर्दर पढ़ते हैं कि वो डिवाइडेड है अकम और पुरम में अकम क्या है डील्स विद internal the love or puram kya hai deals with war and the external right to ye do divisions hue hain fir inki details mein hum gaye hain ki eight anthologies and 10 poem hai jo works abhi kyunki purane do sangam ke jo period the unke unka jo kaam hai wo because of natural causes kho gaya hai aur the third period jiska kaam bacha hua hai it has been divided into 18 ke set mein do sets mein wo divide hue hain that is major and minor major consists of eight anthologies 10 long poems and the minor consists of 18 works to anthologies ka structure humne discuss kiya hai kya hota hai usme aur usme hi humne discuss kiya hai ki thinai kya hoti hain to hum thinai mein dekhte hain ki kaise nature hamara एनवायरमेंट और ह्यूमन इमोशंस को रिलेट किया गया है वो जो सेटिंग है एनवायरमेंट की उसको कैसे यूज किया गया है भावा को एक्सप्रेस करने में ह्यूमन एलिमेंट के तो जो सेटिंग है और जो ह्यूमन एलिमेंट है वो मेटोनमिक हो जाते हैं जैसे हमने पुरानी क्लास में भी डिस्कस किया था वन बी यूज फॉर दी अनर देर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन इट Indian literature, by the virtue of it, is 
all encompassing and stands for the diversity and rich cultural heritage we as a country stand for <laughs> there's no difference between those sangam or um, the text um, that have been discussed uh, by ma'am uh, it is ki um, sangam period ko uh, there are views about how sangam period is uh, has the influence of uh, of the jaina uh, ideology specifically in the context of silapati karam yet uh, in the essay that we read today in the work that we read today hum um, the scholar is of the opinion ki us time pe buddhism jainism were only in in incipient form matlab ki bilkul virgin ho rahe the shuruaati uh, unka uh, shuruaati daur uh, hua tha they were not uh, the part of society uh, at that point of time this were not as a school of thought were not as popular there is a whatsapp group repeating it constantly for the text is completely easy do not get uh, really really puzzled by the text it is a very simple text to wo introduction begin karte hain about sangam literature wo sangam literature ke bare mein baat kar rahe hain wo batate hain ki sangam literature mein akam puram hai akam puram uh, kis period ko belong karte hain ye idea ye kahan se aaya hai tholakapiyam se aaya hai aur tholakapiyam ke bare mein humne pehle bhi padha hai ki tholakapiyam kaise tholakapinyar uh, jo agritya agritinyar ke uh, के वो उनके गुरु थे अग्रितम ग्रामर जिन्होंने लिखी है वो उनके गुरु थे और थोलक पियम क्योंकि एक सर्वाइविंग वर्क है उस पर बेस्ड है वो जो ग्रामेटिकल ट्रीटाइज है उस पर बेस्ड है दिस आइडिया एंड कैरेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ संगम पीरियड तो वो इसके बारे में ही डिटेल में बात करते हैं वो बताते हैं कि कैसे कौन सी थी नहीं क्या किस चीज के लिए स्टैंड करती है और क्या क्या आइडियाज हैं अबाउट यू नो द ट्रेडिशन की कैसे इसमें ओरल ट्रेडिशन का भी हमार को एविडेंस दिखता है बार्डिक पोएट्री का एविडेंस हमें दिखता है आइडिया ऑफ ओरल ट्रेडिशन द प्रीवियस सेशन टू की ओरल ट्रेडिशन क्या है और इसमें जो हम लोगों ने फॉर द केस ऑफ कोवलन हम लोग ने चंद्राज वेंजेंस एंड द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ इट वाइल अंडरस्टैंडिंग द डिलेशन ऑफ द स्टोरी लाइन फॉर कोवलन कोवलन डिस्कस किया था तो एलिमेंट्स ऑफ द ओरल क्योंकि पहले लिखा नहीं जाता था पहले हम लोग ने जो ऐसे में जो इस काम में भी पढ़ा कि कैसे पहले पाम स्क्रिप्ट होती थी और उनका प्रेजर्वेशन टर्मरिक वगैरह से हो रहा है कितना डिफिकल्ट है वो लेटर ऑन इट के पहले जुबानी पीपल यूज टू लाइक ये जो ट्रेडिशन है जुबानी शुरू हुआ है दिस इज द ओपिनियन ऑफ द स्कॉलर please people who want to uh, want to be added to the whatsapp group please send me a text on teams and i'll do that um so silapati karam teen books mein divided hai teen books mein divided hai aur hum kya dekhte hain ki silapati karam kaise shuru ho raha hai uh, ki kovalan aur kannagi ki shaadi hui hai kovalan cheat karta hai kannagi pe kannagi ko pata chalta hai kannagi kovalan ke sath apni Uh, जो जिसके साथ वो चीट करता है उसका नाम है मातवी लव ट्रायंगल है पहली बुक में फिर कन्न की जो उनकी वाइफ है कोवलन की उन्हें पता चलता है तब तक कन्न तब तक कोवलन ब्रोक हो चुका है और कन्न की और कोवलन नए जीवन की शुरुआत करने के लिए मथुरई जाते हैं मथुरई जाते हैं तो वहां पे कोवलन को चोर समझ के वहां का जो राजा है वो सजा देता है और कोवलन को आ, उसको सर उसका सर काटने का आदेश देता है जब वो उसके सर काटने का आदेश देता है और वो मर जा और कोवलन का सर कट जाता है तो कन्न की राजा के पास जाती है और उनसे सवाल करती है कहती है कि राजा मुझे बताइए कि मेरे साथ ये नाइंसाफी क्यों हुई और ये नाइंसाफी का जो एपिसोड है ये हमारी बुक टू में है बुक टू में है तो हम देखते हैं कि जहाँ पे जहाँ पे अभी तक हम प्यार की बात कर रहे थे बुक वन में अब वो प्यार की बातों से एक एलिमेंट ऑफ Uh, violence an element of uh, something that is more than love is introduced that is transgressing towards the puram element that is the uh, that is 
तो दैट स्टैंड फॉर वॉर तो वहां पे हम देखते हैं कन्नड़ की जब सवाल करती हैं और अपनी बातें राजा के सामने रखती हैं और राजा को की ना इंसाफी सबके सामने आती है तो राजा को वो श्राप देती है कि उसके साथ गलत किया गया है और कैसे उसका पूरा राष्ट्र उसका पूरा किंगडम भस्म हो जाएगा इसी दौरान कन्न की अपनी ये जो भी इंसिडेंट्स होते हैं ये लोगों को पता चलते हैं कन्न की जाते जाते जब वो ये सारी चीजें कर चुक कर रही होती है ये श्राप वो दे चुकी होती है तो क्या करती है अपनी लेफ्ट ब्रेस्ट जो है निचोड़ के शी थ्रोज इट फ्लिंग इट अवे अलोंग विद इट जो एंकलेट होता है एंकलेट को वो तोड़ देती है और उस एंकलेट से एंकलेट के टूटने से ही कोवलन की इनोसेंस का भी पता चलता है क्योंकि उस एंकलेट में क्या होते हैं हीरे जवाहरात होते हैं अनलाइक जो मोतियां क्वीन के एंकलेट में से मोतियों से क्वीन का एंकलेट बना था तो जब वो हीरे जवाहरात नीचे गिरते हैं और इनोसेंस प्रूव होती है कन्न की कि ये वाहवाही होती है कि कैसे शी स्टूड फॉर द राइट शी स्टूड फॉर धर्मा शी स्टूड फॉर द जस्टिस और कन्न की को गॉडेस मान लिया जाता है इन बुक थ्री विच डील्स विद द किंगडम ऑफ चेरा चेरा इलांको अतिकल जो है हमारे इसमें जिन्होंने लिखी है बिलोंग टू द चेरा डायनेस्टी तो चेरा कैसे स्टैब्लिश करते हैं कन्नकी को इस बारे में इलेबोरेटेड फॉर्म में जो कैंटो है हमारे उससे डील कर रहे हैं जो आज हमने टेक्स्ट पढ़ा वो बैकग्राउंड मटेरियल है टू द सेम सेम टेक्स्ट दैट शिलापति करम क्योंकि शिलापति करम इन सेल्फ सीम्स लाइक अ सिंपल लव स्टोरी वेर अ वुमेन इज बिकम्स द गॉड इज और ये एक कैसे एज एन एपिक हम उसमें मिथिकल एलिमेंट्स फैंटास्टिकल एलिमेंट्स द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ डिवाइन दू नो द एल्यूजन्स टू प्रोग्नास्टिक प्रोग्नास्टिक मतलब प्रिडिक्टिव मतलब आगे फ्यूचर में क्या होगा भविष्य में क्या होगा भविष्यवाणी करने वाली जो सपने होते हैं उनके बारे में बात करती हैं सो दे गो ऑन टू टॉक अबाउट ये सारे एलिमेंट्स उसमें पाए जाते हैं तो ये सारे जो एलिमेंट्स हैं अब ये एलिमेंट्स इतने सिंपल नहीं है इनकी बहुत लेयर्स हैं राइट right. so, इनकी लेयर्स में में क्या क्या हो रहा है कि इसके बारे में है कि कि इसके बारे अलग-अलग लोगों ने लिखा ये ये लेयर्स हैं स्कूल ऑफ थॉट ये क्या रिप्रेजेंट करता है तो इसको संगम में डाला गया अब संगम के क्या फीचर्स हैं वी हैव डिस्कस इन प्रीवियस सेक्शंस टू और वी आर ए आर वेंकट चलपति भी इसी बारे में बात कर रहे हैं कि संगम क्या है और अकमरपुरम क्या है अकमपुरम में क्या होता है थिनई क्या है प्लस इन थिनई अकम पुरम और इन सारे ट्रेडिशन को पढ़ के हमारे को उस समाज के बारे में क्या पता चलता है कि शिलापति कर्म में जो दर्शाया गया है वो आखिर क्या है कैसा किस टाइप का वहां पे कल्चरल एनवायरमेंट था I'll be sharing with you all the reference material through the WhatsApp as I have been doing uh, till now, and also the PPT. Uh, please go through the material that is available in the SOL website. Uh, thank you for your patience and cooperation. As I cannot see any more uh, queries, I would request Anand sir if I may end the session, please. SOL reference material is more than enough. Uh, but you need to have the text. I have circulated the text with you. Uh, uh, with a uh, circulate i have shared the text with you oh, it has been circulated through the whatsapp group i'll circulate it again for people who are being added later and did not attend the previous session uh, and i have facing difficulty in understanding this session so if i may have your per permission to uh, to end the session uh, please send me the message on teams um, and i'll uh, share with you the link of the group